Look at that thing. Big one, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> Gonzo. Don't get no better than that. They're so bad, dude. <laughs> yes, buddy. <laughs> When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your, your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, that, that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. What makes this rig different about a lot of the rigs on the market is, the, is how long it lasts. It really lasts a long, long, long time if you're not getting it stuck on the bottom. Uh, I've had rigs last two months, three months, four months. I have never broken a wire that has a hooked bait on it. Sometimes these teaser wires will break off. They are stainless steel. You can only bend them back and forth so many times. Uh, I use the lighter wire on the teasers and I use the heavier wire on the hooked baits and that's gonna let this last a lot longer and it's gonna give those teaser baits a lot of action in the water. It's gonna let it pulse. It's gonna let it do its thing like a natural fish movement would. Longevity is the reason I built this. Um, we shouldn't have to buy these every, every time we go out. You should be able to catch two, three, four hundred fish on one of these, and that's why I make them by hand. I was having to wind it too fast, so I, I literally, an eighth ounce of a difference on the weights will make it run in five feet shallower water on a little slower roll, so that's what I did. I was able to roll it a little slower and instantly got a bite, so. That was awesome. Try to get it. Are you, like, Another advantage of this rig of mine is the amount of baits that you're allowed to put on this thing. This thing holds 11 baits and has four blades on it. So what that does, it gives a lot of thump, a lot of vibration underwater. It's almost like sensory overload. The fish got really trained to regular five wire, to regular five wire A rigs. And uh, so I had to make something with some wow factor, something that they can see and when they saw it, they'd run and chase after it. So that's what's special about this rig. That's why I call it the special rig. It's special. You can put a ton of baits on it. Like I said, you can get 11 baits on there plus four blades. That's giving you more thump, more vibration, more visibility to those fish that they've never seen before. That's what makes this rig stand out. They see it from a long ways away and they make a decision quick. Am I going to eat it or am I not? Usually they eat it. Nope. But it's a good one. Thank you. One eight, eight two, no joke. One in the mouth, one just outside of it. I can't get this one off. Yeah. Not really. I thought that one was gonna be real. Let's do that again. The versatility of this rig, it's pretty amazing. You can fill these here with 2.8 size baits, you can fill them with 3.8 size baits, you can fill them with 4.8 or 5.8. Uh, it really is a versatile rig. You don't have to run small baits, you can run big baits on this thing. Uh, what I do, I'll have usually 3.8s on my teasers, I'll have 2.8s on the inside wires here, and I'll have 4.8s on the hook wires here. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. Oh my god. That is a big one, dude. Put the 
4.8s here. Always run the biggest ones on the hooked baits is what I do. And then I'll go ahead and fill the insides with the smaller ones. And then on my teasers, I'll run just a little bit step down. When a shad swims in a school, all the little shad are on top and all the big shad are on the bottom. And so we kind of want to set up the rigs the same way. Keep the big shad on the bottom, the little shad on top. And what it also does is if you keep the inside baits smaller than the hooked baits, it's a lot less friction, it's a lot less drag in the water, and it's a lot easier to fish all day. So keep the smaller baits inside, keep the bigger baits outside. That'll keep that thing stable and it'll make it look really, really natural. All right, so this is what we do when I, uh, when I set up my A-rigs. One, one of the main things that I focus on is when I'm getting the bait on the rig itself, I want to thread the bait halfway onto the teaser. Get that bait threaded halfway on there, make sure it's straight, and then stop for a sec. Give yourself just a little drop of super glue on your ring there, on your, uh, your hitchhiker there. And go ahead and finish putting that bait all the way on. It's gonna slide that glue up. It's gonna lock that bait into place. The most important part about all this, hold that rig straight up and down like it's gonna be swimming, and make sure that bait is the same on each side it wants to lay. That way you know it's gonna run straight. It's not gonna lay on its left, it's not gonna lay on its right, but it's gonna run perfectly straight. And I do that with every single bait on a teaser. Glue them all on. These baits will last you weeks on here unless those tails get bit off. But number one thing when making an A-rig, make sure all the baits run straight, guys. And that's how I do it. Just a little bit of glue, they stay there forever. <laughs> I don't know how big it is, I don't know how big it is. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Big one, dude. <laughs> They're so bad, dude. They're <laughs> getting no better than that. Freaking belly on that thing. That was awesome. <laughs> it's so chunky. They're so fat. Look how big that shad is that bird has. It's like a five incher, dude. It's so crazy, dude. <laughs>